Good morning, lovely tubers, white Mexican, back again for another video here. Today, I'm going to be discussing yet another Generation 1 Core Booster Set, Legacy of Darkness, one of my all-time favorites, so we're just going to get right into this, starting out with Yadagaratsu. Again, we're going to be looking at Near Mint and Lently Played only. The first first edition here is about 28, 28 plus, and then moves quickly into about the 30 range. And then tops off at about 31, which I'm surprised it doesn't go higher than that. But not a lot, a whole lot of first editions on the market for that. Here night Parasha. The first edition for this is ridiculous. I covered this a couple weeks ago. And the first edition, the first first edition is $40. It's pretty much about the same price range, if not a little bit more expensive on eBay. So good luck with that. This card is ridiculously high. I would personally sell this card if you have it. I don't, this does not warrant this price for it. The unlimited are literally 10 to $15, and then the first editions automatically jump straight up to more than double that. It's really insane, so that's a definitely huge sell, in my opinion. Ingestion Fair, really one of the higher point cards for collector's value, for sure, especially for artwork. Um, no first editions for the first page. There's a few on the third page. Starts off at $20, and then bottles tops off at about 100 so what a difference that's pretty incredible but uh realistically yeah about $20 there's quite a few here for a $20 range Ryan Captain uh kind of an uh underrated card I think this card's pretty cool the special summon effect and the defense for the warrior stuff is pretty awesome and the first edition is fair for a pretty penny if I do say so myself Moving on to page 3 here, we get our first first editions from around the $10 range. Fiber Jar, they're let's reset the duel in a card. Unlimited are about 4. Check out the first editions. We have first editions for $16, and then they quickly move into $20. Creature Swap, this is another card I covered a while back, and its first edition print is ridiculously expensive as two. I don't know what is going on with this card and Air Knight Pair Shaft for the first editions, but the first first edition is $50, so this is another gigantic sell, in my opinion. Awesome card, but I would definitely sell it not worth that price point. Last turn is a pretty awesome card, it's currently banned. The first editions, I think they're about $5 range. First editions are about $4. I think this is a pretty square deal. Um, if you can get one for three, even better. But this has a really awesome artwork. It's a really awesome powerhouse card, old school card. Currently banned, of course. But um, yeah, about $4 for the first edition on that. Don't. Dark Balter, there's a lot of fusions that kind of do like negating tip effects, negating normal traps, negating normal magics. This is the best one for sure. You can negate normal magic cards by paying a thousand. The only way this would be good if Kanabi comes out with a card that's basically like instant fusion that negates the summoning conditions. So seeing how this has to be only fusion summon with these, it's pretty difficult to do. So if there's a card that comes out like instant fusion that's super busted, it just lets you bust this out and start negating magic cards left and right. Um, it, that's pretty awesome. It's also really cheap too. The first edition they're going for just a few dollars. Uh, second page has a few and they're about three dollars for the first editions. Reinforcements of the Army. This is definitely the best rarity in my opinion. There's uh, I think two or three different super rare prints but this is the best because it's the original print and also has the magic card stamp because it is the original print and just is amazing and old and nostalgic. So we're gonna look for some first editions here on the third page. There's some for about four dollars. There's also a Hobby League Parallel Ultra, it looks pretty cool too. But then again, it's Hobby League, and I think maybe the upper deck and it's a little thicker, so I'm gonna be careful about those the higher tier games. This is a pretty cool card. Apparently it was a short print common. Um it's not really playable by itself. But I just kind of like how you can see your opponent's hand and you can pitch one. Situational card, really awesome artwork. Um, pretty cheap, $1.25, 23 pages. 
moves into about two dollars. Apparently it's a short print, but something to look at. Bottomless, uh, go to the Legendary Collections 3 and 4, they got Secret and Ultra Rare, it's completely better, don't worry about this rare, an awesome card, but in the original print, it's just way too low of a rarity. Exile Force is a pretty cool card, kind of slow, I love the text in this, the old school uh, way of tripping stuff, the way they wear this, the, the original first generation wording is, is pretty, uh, pretty meticulous, it's pretty funny to me. I believe... The first editions are already jumping up to about $9 and then $10 for the first edition Exile Force. Really awesome artwork. There's several commons of this, which is total garbage. This is the best version of the original print super rares. After Struggle, this was also renamed. I think the first name was After Genocide. And not really a playable card in my opinion. I don't really see any point in playing this card. But, uh at all. Cool artwork and just kind of cool history behind the name. It's an expensive card too. Um, there's only about a handful of these on the market and they quickly jump into about seven, eight dollars for the After Struggle. I personally think the original After Genocide one is um, cool. It's a cooler name and that comes up later in this video. Emergency Provisions. I thought this would be kind of cool to combo off of if you're playing like um, True Draco or any kind of deck where it, your magic and traps plus off of getting sent to the graveyard. I was the way I was reading this. I'm not really sure if it's like if you can only send magics or if you can only send traps or if you because it doesn't say and or. I'm kind of confused about that. But either way, um, I think because it's a quick play magic card, I think that's kind of a, a bonus too. It's a little bit quicker too, a little bit more diversity. But it was just a quick food for thought, and it's just about a dollar. Um. Yep, about a dollar for that card, first edition. Warrior Returning Alive. This card, this is the highest rarity as a rare, which is really sad. I think this card is really awesome. Um, I love Stellar Knights, and I'm thinking about kind of um, practicing a little bit, or maybe throwing these in Stellar Knights to see how it does in one. Really awesome card. Uh, yet to have a hollow print of this, which is really sad. I think this would look awesome and like super secret, more specifically secret. I think it's a really underrated card, and um, it's about a dollar for the first editions. And this is really awesome because it's a magic stamp, and it's just it's really generic. You get it doesn't even matter. You can just take any warrior type monster, or whatever. There's you know warriors are really big archetype in the game. There's a lot of support warrior support, and you can just nab it out of your graveyard and recycle things, which is pretty cool. It's a simple one for one, which is awesome. High respect for that card. This card, more specifically, what I want to talk about. There's just something about this card, call me crazy, I don't know what it is, I just really feel, with Magician's Force, Lustre Dragon, um, the Ultra Rare going really high in, in value, obviously probably because of Collector's value, I think this is going to follow. This is Lustre Dragon number two, um, I, don't, it's not, I don't think it's as cool as Lustre Dragon from Magician's Force, but it's still up there, still has really cool artwork, it's a really old card. Um, this is the highest rarity of it, and the first editions, there's about four pages left, and there's not that many. There's a one up here, and it's cheap too, it's like a dollar, a dollar seventy-nine. Moving on to the third page, there's one here for about two dollars, two dollars, two dollars. There's six here for two dollars, plus the core TCG, I love them, they're an awesome seller. Um, so this could be easily bought out, and I just, I, I don't know what it is, I just really like the artwork in this card, and it's an old school super rare from a generation 1 uh, booster set, I, I just, I feel like this is going to get bought out, and we're going to see some dumb numbers in this card for collector's value, but that's just me, um, and it's really cheap right now, there's only 4 pages, I just, I don't know, I just have a feeling just internally that this card is going to go high for collector's market someday. Only the first editions, of course. Drop off, this is pretty cool. Back in the day, I used to play a hand destruction deck with this, like this, and Crested Drop Off, and Spirit Reaper, and Don Salute. There's the guy right there. Um, really fun times. But what it is, it's not really a big deal. Um, but if you think about it, if you kind of, if we get more support, well, we can make a really fast hand destruction deck, and your opponent is like going off of that dropper resource, and you just pitch it off really quick as long as they're not playing something that benefits from the graveyard. It's a pretty awesome card. I'm um, only 50 cents for the first edition. This is the highest rarity. I think it has some couple other common prints. 
and it's well under a dollar for the first edition. So just a cool old school super rare and a simple one for one. It's slow because it's a trap card, but pretty cool artwork too. This is a really cool card. Uh, Fiend Comedian. I think this would be a really cool card to use in like Burning Abyss or like Light Sworn or any kind of deck where you really want to um, pitch and mill a whole lot into your graveyard. I think this is a powerhouse card and I think it used appropriately. It's kind of situational. You'd probably most likely only use one. It kind of reminds me of like um, that grass looks greener for some reason. I don't know why. When I read this card effect, I thought of Burning Abyss and like Light Sworn. I thought of that grass looks greener for some crazy reason. I don't know, I'm just crazy or something. But um, I think this is an awesome card, and uh, I don't even know if this has ever really seen any play. I've never really seen much play of it, and this is a solo print. This is from Legacy of Darkness, and this is a solo print common. It has not been reprinted for, like, 20 years or however long this game has been going on now. I think that's insane. And the first editions are really cheap, like 10 cents. There's a lot of one ofs, unfortunately, and there's quite a few here on the market. Um, but then again, I just think that we should give it an opportunity in um, decks like Burning Abyss or Light Sworn or whatever. You can see all Light Sworn stuff here, or even uh, Inferno, even. I forgot about that. They're a graveyard deck as well. Really awesome card. It's just insane that it's a solo print. It's been years and years, like, oh, like two decades. And this card has not been reprinted. I think it'd look really awesome. I think it's definitely due for like a secret rare reprint or something awesome and juicy like that. But I'm just going to leave that for you guys to uh, have your own speculation on. Royal Oppression, another band card. Don't worry about this version, we want to talk more specifically about the dual terminal commons, which are ridiculously high right now. This is kind of a sell. Um, I bought a few of these quite a while back. Um, there's, It's almost bought out, essentially. There's one here for $2, a one of, and then it quickly jumps to 6 to 7 and there's holding the line here at 75, that's a lot, but this is almost bought out. So, um, in my opinion, if you guys have these, I would sell these. I would definitely keep a place up for yourself because the dual terminal is super awesome. This is a really powerful card. If it comes back, it'll probably be errated. Hopefully not, because it is super powerful. But it's almost bought out, so um, if you have extra copies, I would definitely sell them. This is a pretty cool card, too. I love the artwork in this. The effect's really not that good. It's just an old school, super rare, and the first editions are really cheap, too. So, I don't know, I just got to think for Purple Dinosaurs and First Edition Old School Super Rares, but other than that, it doesn't really go beyond that. This card, too, this card needs, like, a Super Rare or Secret Rare reprint. Again, of course, there's literally only two versions of this card, both common, it's super lame, two or three versions, I can't remember, but both common. This is such an awesome card. This is, like, the, like a main bread and butter card of um, Reverse Burn decks. You got Nurse Burn, yeah, Nurse Burn, that's what it's called. Um, and it's, it's really cheap. It's, uh, you know, a quarter for first editions. There's a three of two of here and five plus pages. So you guys can take a look at that. A lot of awesome cards in this set. It's, it's like ridiculous how like these cards have still just aged so well and you can still mix them in, splash them in with even current day meta stuff in my opinion. Next card, Super Rejuvenation. Um, we got the comments here for like, you know, 17 cents or whatever, but there is a super rare reprint from the infamous Legendary, what I always talk about, Legendary Collection 3 and 4, Joey's World, which is, this is another banned card, of course, is currently banned. This card's super, super crazy. You know, hopefully it comes back eventually. And hopefully it doesn't get errated, but it's about two dollars for first edition, so not a bad, not a bad deal. There's only three pages left. I would definitely get a playset. I don't remember if I have my playset or not. I think I've been looking, watching this card for a while. I've been kind of cheaping out, waiting for it to go down. I don't think it's gonna go down because two dollars is already a pretty reasonable card for how powerful it is if it ever comes back. Legendary Ocean, I always wanted to talk about, this needs a secret rare reprint, it would look so nice in secret rare, I can't say that about everything, obviously secret rare is my favorite rarity, but anyway, um, like, I just like love water decks, and it's cool, like how there's like a lot of different crazy blowout effects you can use with Umi on the field, and um, I don't know, it, it's like, there's only common reprints of that as well. Pretty cool card though, there's the, um, 
the original print after genocide of that card, which surprisingly is I don't I don't know if I have this backwards if after struggle was the reprint or after genocide was original. I can't remember. But for some reason this card is like mad cheap. The there's two for fifteen cents here. Let's see what the other first first edition is. Definitely a collector's card because the history about the name change for sure. But, uh, like, I don't understand, like, this one, I think, I'm pretty sure that this was the original one that has, like, the rule, like, the censored, awesome, cool name, and it's, like, like, milestones cheaper than After Struggle. I don't know how that happened, um, that's crazy. I don't think I have any of these. This is super cheap. First editions are under a dollar, like, I'd be all over that. That's really awesome for a collector's value. It's not a playable card, but for collector's value, for sure. Only the first editions, of course. We, uh... First editions is our cornerstone here in the white Mexican videos. This card's really cool. Um, Fangish Gang Mirror. This card, basically, just because it lets you see your opponent's hand. That's what I like. Um, I'm a really big Dark World player, and I like playing, um, oh, what's that card called? I can't remember. Um, it's a trap card, and you call a card name, and your opponent has to pitch it. Anyway, I forget. But, um, this is pretty cool. No one really plays spirits, but, you know, it, it's not above or below Konami to make more spirit support. There could be a really busted deck that's based off spirits, and this card could be maybe playable with it. I just think it's super awesome that you can see your opponent's hand. I think that alone is really awesome. The whole discarding spirit monster could not really be, you know, covalent or not. But just the sheer fact that you get to see your opponent's hand, which is awesome for free for a one-of. And it's a single print, a uh, solo print. It was only made as another infamous card that was, was not reprinted after this ancient, ancient set. And the first editions are mad cheap. They're like $14, I mean, $0.14, cents, $0.14. Cents. Uh, plenty of availability here, so why not check it out? Why not get a play set for like a buck or so? This card's pretty cool. Um, but the only thing is it's only for one turn. If it was like longer than one turn, this would be like super super busted, so I kinda get why it's only one turn. Um it's another actually that's not a solo print. It's just kind of I don't know. It, I just I just read this and I thought it was just kind of an interesting effect. I'm gonna give it that colorful uh blanket term, an interesting effect. But um nothing really beyond that. This card is really awesome. It's situational depending on what your opponent's playing, of course, but this effect is just blowout. Like if you pause the video and read this, I, I've taught, I've featured this in a couple of my videos. This is a super underground card that I think could potentially go off depending on if like a meadow um, is a really defining meta where there's a lot of level threes running around where you can just snatch them all with this one effect. It's super awesome. This is just a common. There is a star foil from one of the battle packs. Starfoil Rare, which is literally like the same price, just a little bit more. Obviously, you're going to want to get, I mean, I would personally get, and I have the Starfoil ones. Unfortunately, there isn't anything higher in rarity than the Starfoil for this card. Um, and it's it's super cheap, too. It's like a quarter, 17 cents. There's four pages, so get after it. Why not? Really awesome name, really awesome artwork, too. This card is really awesome artwork. I just that's all I really want to say that it's not a playable card anymore. Um, I think I used it with like Dream Clown back in the day, but um, I'm pretty sure it's a solo print and just a just a cool just cool artwork. Nothing crazy. This is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. There's something about this card. You know, it, it only came common, but uh, I just think it's kind of an interesting alternative. You know, hopefully, eventually we get. Giant Tornade and Heavy Storm back, you know, fingers crossed, eventually. And we will, eventually, it's inevitable, we just don't know when. Um, or Harpy's Feather Duster, even better. But, um, I don't know, I just think for what it's worth, there's a lot of high-level dragons that you can bust down special summon on dragons really quickly. And this could be a healthy alternative for full-on board wiping of magic and trap cards. I think we're getting to the bare minimums here, brothers. I don't 
recall really kind of highlighting anything else. This is just kind of some silly, silly comments here. Um, all right, that that is all. So that's that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope I showed you something or you learned something awesome from this video. And you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you in the next video.